All of the problems I work through in my videos can be downloaded from accountingworkbook.com. If you'd like a copy for yourself, just click the PDF link and you can download a copy to your computer. Also found on the website are links to all of my accounting videos, not just the ones here on YouTube that are publicly listed. They're also members only videos. About 40% of my videos are free and open. The other 60% are for members. If you click one of the members links, it'll take you to a page that looks like this, says members only content. If you'd like access to that content, just hit the join button. Okay, let's jump into the problem. Let's examine problem 71A. I'm going to break this into two parts. We'll do parts A through E in this video and parts F and G in the next. Degree of operating leverage, I'm going to spend a fair bit of time just explaining what it is. But let's jump into the problem and see how we do. Charming Clothiers manufactures neckties and bow ties. The company has the following information. The company's sales price is $30 a unit. The variable cost of making bow ties is $18 a unit. The company expects to have fixed costs of $60,000 next year. The company expects to sell 8,000 bow ties next year. Assume no taxes. Well, that makes our life a little easier. We will do future questions where we have some taxes to deal with. But for now, assume no taxes. Um, okay, first thing they wanted us to do is break even point units. But before I do any of that, I like to just lay out the information I have. So I have a sales price and I just put S as my sales price. It's my sales price per unit and my sales price per unit is $30. And maybe I'll do a little, I'll actually do per unit and in total, which in this case is based on 8,000 units. So I'll have two kind of columns here. So if I were to hit my target of or my expected sales of 8,000 bow ties, $30 a bow tie times 8,000 uh, I think that's $240,000. Let me just bring down my calculator and confirm that to be true. Uh, 8,000 bow ties at $30 a bow tie. Yes, $240,000. I was correct. Good. <laughs> Hate to get that wrong on the first <laughs> calculation. Okay, let's move on. Um, so we also have variable expenses. It's meant to cost $18 per bow tie, variable expenses of 18. Need that calculator back, I should have just left it. Uh, 18 times 8,000 will mean $144,000 in costs of making and selling those bow ties, the variable costs. We know sales minus variable expenses equals contribution margin. Now, again, looking at a traditional income statement, sales minus cost of goods sold equals gross margin or gross profit. This is a little bit different. Sales minus variable expenses equals contribution margin. This creates something called a contribution format income statement. But for now, just know, okay, when I sell a bow tie for $30, its variable costs are 18. Each bow tie is contributing $12, 30 minus 18 to my bottom line. 240 minus 144 by gum, I think that's $96,000 in um, contribution margin. So CM per unit is 12, total CM is expected to be 96,000. Our company's fixed expenses are estimated at $60,000. So if all goes according to plan, our company's gonna have $36,000 in operating income, right? Our pre-tax profit basically will be $36,000. Marvelous. We haven't answered any piece of this question, but marvelous, right? We've gotten uh, a few pieces of information that may be useful to us. Uh, the first thing asks us to compute break-even point in units. Now, in my workbook, I've got this CVP formulas sheet available to you and, you know, definitely take a look. Break-even units formula is given there. Fixed expenses divided by CM per unit. Let's do that. So we know our fixed expenses. We don't do, you, you'll notice actually, we don't do fixed expenses per unit. It doesn't make sense because they're fixed. It doesn't matter how many units I sell. If I sold not 8,000, but 10,000 units, my, C, my fixed expense per unit would change. So, so it doesn't make any sense to do it on a per unit basis. In any event, our fixed expenses are $60,000 divided by CM per unit, and it's gonna give us our break-even unit. Our CM per unit is 12, 60,000 divided by 12. I've lost my calculator now, where did I put it? 
There it is. 60,000 divided by 12 is 5,000 units, 5,000 bow ties in order to break even. Okay, there we have it. We have answered part A. Part A said calculate break-even units. Part B, calculate break-even dollars. Well, the easiest way is to use formula three, break-even point in dollars, break-even units times selling price. Okay, so I know I need to sell 5,000 units, and when I sell 5,000 units, I sell them for $30 a unit, so 5,000 times 30 means if I want to break even, I need to sell $150,000 worth of bow ties. Again, both of these numbers are like really useful to know. Okay, well, once I'm selling more than $150,000 in bow ties, I'm starting to make money. Or once I sell my 5,000th bow tie, I'm starting to make money. It, you can put it in human terms. Okay, well, there's 12 months in a year. means I got to sell around 400 bow ties per month to hit that target, maybe 420 or something like this. Um, but, you know, it puts it in human terms. Uh, and I like that, right? As, as a person that, you know, is making decisions for a business, this is a useful thing to know. Now, for many businesses... Breaking even is not the goal. Sometimes when you're a new business, you're like, yes, I'd like to start off by breaking even and then we'll see how things go. But for most people, when you start a business, you're not hoping to make zero dollars. You're risking, you're spending time, money, effort. Unless you have a very noble cause, you are hoping to turn a profit. And this company is no exception. They're hoping to make $50,000. So that's their target pre-tax profit. Again, we're ignoring the impact of taxes. Well, to figure out a target profit calculation, target sales in units, here we go, it's formula number seven, fixed expenses plus target operating profit divided by CM per unit. So again, our company's fixed expenses were 60, our target profit 50, and we're going to divide by CM per unit, and our CM per unit was 12. I'm just pulling these numbers off from various parts of the question. 12 is our CM, 60 is our fixed cost, and our new number was our target profit. So the numerator here, $110,000. The denominator remains 12. Need my calculator back to do this one. $110,000 divided by 12 gives us 9166.66666. Now again, this is guesstimate, right? Our fixed expenses are not ever going to be exactly $60,000. This is our best, just our best guess. So I know when I sell 9,167 bow ties, we won't sell a decimal number of bow ties, that's how many bow ties I need, not only to break even, but to turn a profit of $50,000. And again, when people crunch this number, it's an estimate. They're just saying, okay, roughly, you know, at around 9,100 bow ties, I'm hitting what I'm hoping to hit. Uh, so if I go sell 10,000 bow ties, I'd expect to be more money than I hoped, and 8,000 I'd expect to make less, and 9,000 is about right. And again, it's used to eyeball the thing and say, is it reasonable that I'm going to sell 9,000 bow ties? Well, I'm projecting eight, so I'm, I'm not going to hit my target if I hit my projection. Okay, so 9167 bow ties or units, whatever it is that I want to measure in. Let's move on to D. D says, prepare a budgeted contribution format income statement. We kind of already did right here. I'll, I'll do it in better form. So name of the company. Charming Clothiers. Name of the statement, income statement, and then we give a year-end date, and nothing's given in this question. So I'm just going to say for the year ended December 31st. Um, and I, I might be wise to say, <laughs> add a little bit to this title, budgeted contribution income statement. So I can add that budgeted contribution format income statement, something like this to indicate this is a standard income statement based on historical data. This is just the back of the napkin type of an income statement. Okay, 
So our top line is our sales rev and our projected sales rev is $240,000. I'm just taking all of these numbers. That's my contribution format income statement. $240,000 are um, variable expenses are projected to be 144. Our contribution margin, 240 minus 144 is 96,000. Our fixed expenses were 60. So our operating income 96 minus 60 is 36,000, our income before tax. Dollar sign at the top, dollar sign at the bottom, and we've got ourselves a very nice budgeted contribution format income statement. Okay, we have answered part D. One more kind of new calculation, and then we'll take a break. We'll stop this video there. So let's do part E, and then we'll stop the video, and uh, I'll explain operating leverage, which is a fairly complicated concept in our next video. But let's move on to E. The margin of safety in both dollar and percentage terms. Okay, the margin of safety tells us, based on our budget, how much room do we have if we fall short of budget? In other words, how much room do I have uh, before I'm in some trouble? Uh, and so, here's the formula, budget sales in dollars, not units, minus break-even sales in dollars. Okay, so I have my budget sales in dollars. This is my budget, 240. And I have my break-even sales in dollars, 150,000. So I just take 240,000, that's my budgeted sales. Again, because I was budgeting to sell 8,000 units at $30 a unit, 8,000 times 30 is 240. My break-even sales, just take that break-even point from earlier, it's 150000 And I have 90000 as my margin of safety. What does that say? It says, listen, I'm planning, I'm expecting to sell $240,000 worth of bow ties. If I fall $90,000 short of my goal, I'm still gonna be okay, right? I'm not gonna be losing money. I have a $90,000 in wiggle room here. If my estimates or my budgets are bad, I have $90,000 in wiggle room. And having lots of wiggle room, of course, is a good thing. Uh, so it, it asks for this in dollar form, also in percentage form. What we do to get it in percentage form is we take our margin of safety, which is 90,000 and we divide by our budgeted sales. So in this case, that's 240,000 and we get a percentage. So 90,000 divided by uh, 240. We get 37.5%, 0.375, which is 37.5%. And again, what this tells us is, if our sales fall 37.5% below what I was planning, I'm still gonna be breaking even. I'm still gonna be okay. So I have 37% wiggle room. I can be off by up to 37% and I'll be okay. If I was, my estimate's off by more than that, if I, my if sales fall short by more than 37%, I'm in some trouble, I'm losing money. But that's the, how much wiggle room I have. Again, very useful for a small business to know kind of how much room we have to blow our budget or to miss our budget by. Okay, let's stop this video here. In our next video, we'll just continue this problem. We'll put, do parts F and G, the degree of operating leverage, probably the most challenging concept this chapter, but one of the most powerful and most important. Stay tuned.